right guys so we're gonna take a look at a couple of monkey kung fu applications and talk about in general how to apply kung fu in your like training in fighting because most people have completely like misinterpret a lot of the techniques and don't really understand what it means to even use traditional martial arts or kung fu in like actual fighting situations so the first we're gonna look at two different strikes or block variations so the first one is the ho shilian it's called the monkey washi is the face it is kind of like a blocking motion so in some ways it's very self-evident I mean, if someone punches you you can just put your arms here in front it can block them sideways if it comes straight you can block there you can it can come through like close to the elbow areas like even if i'm doing like sparring or something my, my arms are very often here and i do this okay it's very similar just like raising your hand to block a punch but the kung fu movement is like this way or this is how it's practiced in the monkey shiniba so obviously like again the practice is this but the actual like how you utilize this in like practically in some kind of fighting scenario or sparring is not like the same like you would be going this way and just brushing your face and so so on this is just a technique that you can apply in any way almost that you want someone to respond you can just do it like this way or you can do it the other side so again like someone might look at this movement like well it's like silly or something what are you like doing you know just doing this motion but it's just getting repetitions and getting instinctive in this kind of circular kind of like a blocking blocking motion that's what it really is you can very easily block all sorts of punches even hooks, straight punches all kinds of punches from here and especially in monkey kung fu these parts can actually hurt quite a bit if you take a knuckle someone hits your knuckles from here it might hurt a bit but the specialty in monkey kung fu or something is that these parts are very hardened I don't, I'm not on a very advanced level on the Harding, but I can still take like good hits on these forearm areas. So from here, doing these blocks, the other thing is that you can add that into a flow or flow with it to throw, for example, a hook. You can go here, throw an elbow, block and elbow. You can, if you go to the other direction, you can throw, for example, uppercut, block, straight punch block like a power jab so it's you know if I do it very quickly like this way for example you would maybe think well like that's Kung Fu at all actually it doesn't really look like that but I'm applying something that is also found a very just like a traditional sort of exaggerated blocking motion like this way right so it's really all about the technique. It doesn't matter if you have a jab, like a normal jab or some parry or something. That this all, like none of that works unless you can make it work. The same goes to any sort of Kung Fu punch or something. Like you're yourself responsible for making that strike or that technique or that block actually work. And it's all about the timing. It's about the situational awareness, it's about the distance. It's about the setup. What do you do? Do you throw some feints or something? So that's what, in the end, makes almost any technique work. Like nothing like just even a regular jab doesn't really work too well for many people if you don't know really how to use it. Like it's the most basic thing, but there's few guys who only have, for example, very good jab. If you look at like UFC or something. So making a technique work is really more about you than it's about where it's coming from. So that comes from the Kung Fu, or that comes from kickboxing or something like that. It's up to you to make it really work. Another thing about like this kind of hand movement that it can be quite confusing. It can be like a, almost a setup or like just like making the other people think like, what, what are you doing? You're there's not really sure what's going to come from there. And you might think it's just this motion when suddenly there might be like a punch. You do it quickly like this kind of stuff here. and then there's the hook like this way here and the overhand or straight or something something just comes from there so but this is of course one pattern but you can see the same principle if you go on the principle level arm movement in front of the head Anderson Silva Joel Romero 
doing this kind of stuff with their arms and then doing throwing some kicks or something like they use this kind of as a distraction because it makes the other people if you're always like this way you're gonna be yeah, you know maybe you know something's very basic is might be coming on but you get this and you might be completely like surprising the opponent in some cases of course if you know that some guys tricks then you know the tricks but if it's a you don't really know the opponent and he starts doing something weird with his hands something might really mix up your brain and suddenly there's some surprise coming some kick or some punch that you have no idea it's coming there so that is used by actual fighters uh, in actually MMA for example the second technique was also what I used to the to hit the back with this forearm is a forearm punch here like this way hitting essentially with with this part you've probably seen even like the Shaolin Kung Fu guys also Mike Kung Fu these are harder so you can actually hit with this part and it's like this is actually a hit that I got from Bas Rut and he was showing this I think it was with Shane Faison in the fight tips you can search for the video yourself he was doing a punch on the back on the heavy back with his forearm I was like what the hell is going on because that back like it's almost like you kick like a huge powerful roundhouse kick direct to the back that's how much it moves and the road bus was basically explaining like how much power he can put to it and how it's very convenient because instead of doing the kick you can just throw from here with this part with your forearm on the back and it's incredible powerful move I remember watching this clip like this was some years ago and I went to and tried to do that on the back and man it hurts so much like I could do like a couple of punches with this part and after that I was like done so I was like it didn't really make sense like at that point like well, why, why should I do that so fast forward I go to Taiwan to learn with Jiang Yushan who is the Monkey Kung Fu master and suddenly I like realized why do these kind of strikes essentially can work and why they can be extremely devastating and the reason is because those guys have their limbs like made like concrete like this the Jiang Yushan he has all of this part the whole every all of this is just like thick skin like uh, like concrete it feels like we did this kind of arm hitting with him it felt like getting hit with another bar basically so doing I started to do from that onward hardening doing like the traditional hardening practices the wood and bone that we cover in the intro and extra kung fu course I did that stuff hardening for my arms and suddenly I start to do it again to hit the back and now it seems like it's working because it's there's still a sting but it actually feels like I can put a lot of power into it so it actually felt really practical and the movement itself feels very natural because it's not that much different if I throw like a just like a from here from the rear hook like a right hook with my arm so it's not that much different to throw it like this way and some guys some guys throw their hooks very wide open very big movement like here and it works they hit with it so I don't again this is one of those things where I don't see some people are always like well you gotta throw your hook like like this way or something when very like many most of the pro guys they can hit very big hooks and they oftentimes hit and they're very powerful it's just again it's a matter of the setup the situation where you're utilizing it both can work very well but that's one of the things like if I'm throwing this one I have to open up so maybe there's a maybe there's a jab and it comes from that maybe I maybe I uh, dodge downwards like this way it, it can be a counter it can be directly to the other guy's arms I can just like hit basically uh, this I think it's the said like breaking the gate the other guy has the protection here you punch the arms you can break the gate so that's also one of the applications that you can utilize with it but so it's you can try it yourself to hit the back it should feel quite natural but you can notice that it really is that hardening that makes it super effective because like it hurts it really hurts if someone hits you with a hardened arm hardened forearm into your forearms which might be more softer and the same thing is just if you like if this part hits like the bus root and said it's like a head kick uh, or the power that you can get to it, the leverage is a huge amount of leverage so you can get to it it can feel like so you're basically doing a head kick roundhouse kick with your forearm so very very impactful exercise and the same thing as in the in this one as well and all those others like i said many people that judge the kung fu like based on 
something like well where's the where's you know some elements that like they have this idea of a correct way to punch for example and if you don't have that there then it doesn't work but like I said no punch no technique really works in isolation there's always the fight that is in there and there's different things happening there can be the different setups you can have the different things somewhere that you do you can have your head movement there you can have different footwork different type of leaning touching and from there you will utilize those techniques not if I just like I'm here standing and try to throw this of course it's gonna be seen of course it's gonna be blocked but you have seen I like I've seen much crazier for example strikes work in MMA uh, in UFC that people can hit like huge like uh, with huge overhands and so on and so on so these are not like out of the ordinary but really the main thing like people don't understand also Kung Fu because they look at only the external form and they think that there's kind of the same Kung Fu is like a super technique that you can utilize in a fight this magical killing touch or some kind of cheap power punch or whatever you're using Kung Fu is really about the principles so and Kung Fu can contain principles same, same as boxing contains principles of using a certain kind of body mechanic of rotation rotating with the hip pivoting on the toes utilizing a certain like a shoulder snap like that way that's like you can say that's Kung Fu because you're using just to see the certain mechanic then you have the Shiniba which have a different type of mechanic for example utilizing this sort of shrinking and expanding and sound and utilizing the breathing and belly and all of that but it, it's about finding those mechanical principles that you can put uh, that you can use in your body and then applying into that mechanic any kind of punch so it's really on a principle level understanding that if I'm for example I say I'm using Kung Fu in a fight and it, I'm just throwing a chap but it's hard to say what kind of mechanic you're using behind it like what's the actual principle that you use maybe that comes from Kung Fu maybe like Kung Fu and even traditional boxing or something have very similar similar type of mechanics to some extent so getting rid of the idea that Kung Fu is something like like a, like this sort of fast Wing Chun stuff also even that can work as well but it's not only that sort of fast stuff with high pitch yells it's really it can the external form can take any shape and I think like Jiang Yushan was who said that transmit the principles not the skill so the skill is the external thing that happens with your body you know that's not so important so transmit the principles then apply the principles and you can do any kind of physical technique to it any sort of punch any straight punch hook forearm it doesn't matter back fist something but if you have that sort of powerful frame behind it and you have the principle of the mechanics behind it then you can also say that that's kung fu as well so look at on the principle level look at it a little bit deeper and understand that it's about the personal responsibility to make these techniques work like if you want to try them somewhere like don't necessarily blame the art okay i learned this from kung fu and it doesn't work you know maybe you just don't know how to use this maybe you don't even understand in the first place how to use it and in that way it's good to do some exploration and search on these deeper principles Thank you.